response from your team after Thursday that you would want to see? Yes, yeah, for the most part, yes. I've I seen a response from the staff, uh, from myself, from from the team, and um, yeah, well, I, I like I like our, our last our two practices were today was a lighter. Um, they, you know, um, but yeah, no, yeah, we we that was and it wasn't the guys, right? It was, it was the staff. We didn't we didn't prepare them. To, for that level of competition and um, with the emotional attachment that they would have, and um, yeah, that that was that full, full, fully the staff's fault. I was gonna say, is, when you got to rewatch that, was there anything that kind of bothered you more than others? No, it was exactly with a transition defense, you know. And uh, when guys make mistakes, man, if we our guys want to play, so if we will um, hold them accountable to it in the game, then uh, they won't keep making the same mistake. We'll, we, as a staff, allowed the same mistakes to, to happen, um, transition defense and rebounding. And so that, that's on us. You mentioned the rebounding, and now they've had a chance to go through the moment and sort of reevaluate what stands out about those problems. Is there one thing in particular that you can pinpoint? We weren't physical enough. We weren't physical enough. And so it's a, you know, we, we play in a grown man's league, and this was a great um, wake-up call force that size is not enough you've got to be physical as well that first practice after the game what was the sort of mood like during that practice oh it was great guys want to get better you know i mean had guys you know call me and you know uh, ask questions and have some some comments and you know some guys that took ownership of stuff and um and so everybody was in it to get better You said a wake-up call, but um, is there things you can learn from this game that maybe you couldn't from the other two, or is it just was it just you were exposed more for the things you already knew? I guess were well, issues? you know, I, I, I'd like to uh, say that I thought we could um, compensate for what I felt was something that was lacking, uh, or maybe we wasn't as good at, and but we can compensate for some other things. But I mean, we had single-digit turnovers, and uh, you know, and so. Um, you know, the the staple of a good defense is the ability to rebound and the staple of – and you have to be able to set your defense, which is transition defense and so floor balance and, um, you know, and then get yourself – when shots aren't going in because they're not going to go in every night, you got to get yourself second-chance shots. And, and, and we didn't do any of those things. And uh, like I said, that's, that's all on the staff. And, you know, sometimes you have to have something that, like, embarrasses you to get you to, like, like really own up to it. And so I, I, I know that – I was embarrassed that I didn't have our guys ready. Now I wasn't embarrassed with our guys. I was embarrassed with myself that I didn't have our guys ready. And so uh, we've uh, done a better job the last few days. I know after the game you were impressed with Doug. Even looking back, what it's kind of stood out to you in his first start? I say all the time, point guards are judged by Ws. That's it. That's it. So if, if you're going to be a point guard or a pitcher, Right, you're gonna be judged by wins and losses, and that's it. So um, it doesn't matter, uh, like, you know, what individuals do. It's what did the team do. Well, what's the biggest thing that I know you like the things that he does outside of scoring, and he brings the energy that he needs to even without scoring. What's the biggest thing that Coleman needs to do to kind of get to kind of take part in in, in scoring more? In scoring more, I, I don't know if it's Coleman. I think it's us. We had the uh, we got put him in better positions where he's more comfortable. Like instead of having him adapt to us, we got to adapt to what he does uh, best, and that's a collaboration between the staff and him, and picking his brain and some of the other guys. Like we got some other guys who can, um, you know, put the ball in the hole if they're put in the right positions. And now that they've I feel like they're buying into how we want to play and what's important to us. Now we got to um, figure out what allows them to be the best version of themselves. And then just because of the weird time that it, it's kind of falling in the year, I'm not sure what the status is and how much you can say, but the commitment that you guys got today, can you comment on that at all? Yeah, I'm, I'm not allowed to comment on that. We saw Brendan, I guess, struggle to shoot from three against LSU. Was there, were they defending him a different way, or were that just shots not falling? Yeah, no, he, um, they, they did a good job of um, making crowd in the space and not letting him get any easy catches. And we have to do a better job as a staff of creating better opportunities for him um, with that. And, uh, so um, 
you know, we, we, you can expect that the rest of the year. And somebody wants to they know they have to take that away because he's a weapon. And then it's up to us to create um, some creative ways to help him get open. Mississippi Valley has played one of the tougher schedules in college basketball. And, you know, obviously it's any given day uh, in college basketball. What do you want to see from your team on tomorrow? I, I want to see transition defense and rebounding. Those are two things that we worked on. Transition offensive and defensive rebounding. And then setting our defense on on in the half court and being able to guard guys and uh, you know eighteen fifty to go in the game it's a eight point game at Texas and Texas is a really good team so uh, we don't take anybody lightly we we have to keep getting better and and they're, they're gonna they're gonna come they're coming in to to try and get a win and and we 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 have to to bring the fight to them with the chore jumping on the moving train after missing the first two games um, how did you evaluate how he played? Um, on Thursday, and that, what's next for him? You know, it's it's like if you go back to our first game or even our first exhibition game, everybody walked away and said, man, they didn't look very well. We were a little tight, right? And um, he not only had his first game, you know, real game to play, but then it was against a high major opponent, you know, and, and so that's a tough way to, to evaluate, you know, him. I, he's had two really good days of practice. If I can look ahead just a little bit, what, do you, what excites you about getting away for a little bit and taking this team to a, a neutral site to play a tournament? You know, we get to be together. Uh, the weather's going to be nice. Um, you know, uh, n n not a lot of distractions. Get to do some team building things while we're there. And I always like this time. Um, you know, there's some things that we have in the bag that we save for this time to do with the team and um, help guys grow closer together. And, um, you know, then. Growing up in the Virgin Islands, it's you know I have family down there and stuff, so uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool. I was gonna ask you, how many people would you have you know that you know personally who are gonna be at the games watching? Ah, a lot. It's gonna be a lot. I have cousins and you know Reem and I coach the Virgin Islands team, and so a bunch of the players and and even the staff members and different people that we've worked with bunch of media people that we do stuff with. So it, it's going to be a, a really cool time. And um, I'm excited that we get to go back and our guys get to experience some of what we grew up with and, um, you know, and, and then play some good basketball. You mentioned the basketball, and I think it's like three games in the span of four or five days. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of balance that and making sure that the guys get to experience the Virgin Islands and not, you know, just focus on basketball all the time? Well, we're gonna um, we're going in like a day early, and so um, when we land, and then the next day it's an off day. So as far as no game, so we'll do some prep, but they'll also get a chance, you know, go out on a catamaran for a little bit, and you know we'll have a good dinner. Um, the night that we get there, we have a dinner on the beach, and um, so it's uh it's some some really cool things that that, that we do with them, and. Uh, you know, it, it's business, right? Like for the staff, it's business. But um, we also, I, I just remember two years ago when we were in uh, the Caymans and we did a walkthrough outside, right? And uh, I just stopped the guys and I said, look, and I mean, we were, you could, the beach and the water and, you know, people on sailboats or whatever they were, you know, just like, and we get to do it in that type of environment. Who gets to do that? How many people get to do that in their life? And, and so just get them to enjoy and appreciate the opportunities there for them.